We start off with the Bucks. Hmm. Um, all right, yeah, I'll jump in here. So watching this game, I saw a lot of uh, – speaking on the Bucks, a lot of um, same old Bucks. They had rock star defense, and when they're hitting the three ball and when they're scoring, they're just a deadly team on both ends. I think they ended up winning this team uh, – winning this game by 40. Um, I think definitely, definitely shows to their strengths, but also that this Warriors team is way more depleted than it was last year. Um, in terms of uh, the Bucks pickups, though, I love, love, love Drew Holiday. I think he is another one of those guys who a lot of NBA players talk about him, but not a lot of the media covers him. And I think for that reason, he's very underrated. And I always like to bring up the fact that I have seen that Damian Lillard has put on record numerous times that Drew Holiday is the hardest defender he goes up against. And I think that is something – that cannot be understated. So I think the box doing a lot of the same stuff and I love the drew holiday pickup. Yeah, that's, that's pretty right on. I think the one thing that's been better from the box is they've been trying to post up Giannis a bit more. And I really like that because I, one argument I used to get into with people during these playoffs and last year's playoffs is the people who just naturally said that Mike Budenholzer sucks. He doesn't use Giannis, right? I always ask the question, how are you supposed to use Giannis in their offense? You can put him at the top of the key and have him come downhill, but what else can he do? He can't shoot, so you can't put him on the wing. He can't really play in the high post, and you can't put him in the low post because he's got the one little swoop half spin over his left shoulder that he tries to put up with his right hand, but it's not like he has a hook shot, not like he has a turnaround jump shot. Well, it looks like he's been working on that, and they're making a concerted effort to get him into the post. And I really like putting him in the post because if you can get him down there, then if you double down, Giannis is a seven feet one and he's a great passer so he can whip it out to shooters and they can knock down shots. And if they don't double, Giannis should have a size advantage to score in the post in isolation every time down the floor. So that's definitely a way they can close games. The Drew Holiday acquisition was huge. I totally agree. And then a guy that's been lighting it up the first two weeks of this season. And I think he's a guy that never gets credit, but he only gets scrutiny when he plays bad is Chris Middleton. He's consistently been a really solid player. Is he the best number two in the NBA? Absolutely not. But he's a very solid player who I don't think gets enough love for when he plays well. Yeah, I'm with you on the whole Giannis thing. I think the Budenholzer criticism is more with the minutes. I've been a critic of it. Playing Giannis 32 minutes in a and you know, like game five of a playoffs, why would you do that? Like you look at the, you were looking at the heat, you see Jimmy Butler play 40 minutes consistently. I mean, do what Thibodeau does. Just throw out your starters there for as long as they physically can. Like, I don't want to see if I'm the bucks and I'm a fan, I don't want to see DJ Wilson stepping on the court in a prime time game. Like keep Giannis in there, keep your starters in there. Um, you know, like for 40 minutes, even 38 minutes, like at the minimum, I think that's where the criticism comes from, and I'm right on it. Um, with the Drew Holiday pickup, yeah, I think that was really underrated. Um, him as a third piece will be nice. And if you guys remember, uh, Damian Lillard, um, so they played the Pelicans when they had Boogie and they had AD, they had Rondo, and that was a team that like kind of was a good matchup against the Warriors. Unfortunately, Boogie, yeah, Boogie was hurt, though. Yeah. Boogie got injured, right? But they – um, they either swept, I think they swept the Trailblazers. They swept right? Portland. Yeah, and you saw Drew Holiday picking him up at half court because, you know, he was just harassing him on defense. So I really do think Drew will be a difference maker. And just the upgrade over Bledsoe, I mean, we've seen Bledsoe in the playoffs. He's he's not it. If he was alive in the early 2000s, maybe he'd be like – he'd really fit into that era in my opinion. But right now he can't really shoot. He's good at defense, sure, but – if you have Giannis as your main guy, you need your point guard to at least have a formidable three. Drew Holiday is a good three-point shooter. Mm -hmm. um, Middleton's a good three-point shooter. And I'll shout out one other guy who not many people talk about, uh, Torrey Craig, who was on the Nuggets. I think that's honestly a pretty solid pickup. Having a good defending wing in the playoffs is so invaluable. You know, you need someone to at least be able to switch onto the KDs and the Jimmy Bolt Butlers of the world. So. I thought that was a really good pickup. Yeah, I'm totally with you on Torrey Craig. You know, I think that he's a better Wesley Matthews. He's a better defensive player than Wesley Matthews. 
And, you know, he's not the best shooter. He only shoots 32%, but Wesley Matthews is like a career 35% shooter from three. So for 3%, I'll take the much better defense. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really underrated pickup for them because they're going to need a guy who can guard Kyrie Irving because you can't make Drew Holiday do that for seven games a series. They're going to need someone who can switch off and guard Kyrie Irving, but also give you minutes on Kevin Durant, give you minutes on Kemba Walker, give you minutes on Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and he's the kind of guy that does that. And I think the overlooming question is, do they have enough to make it to the Eastern Conference Finals? We know Giannis has sort of struggled. Um, he's gotten criticized a lot for it, obviously, because when you have you have MVP season and you underwhelm in the playoffs, people come for your head. No, what do you think? Do you think they have enough to get to the Eastern Conference Finals, possibly playoff uh, championship game? Yeah, so I think the thing with the Bucks is they definitely have enough on the defensive end because as much as you want to talk about Giannis in the offensive end, he can guard anyone, and especially with the big dogs in the East. Like, let's look at how many people in the league can guard Kevin Durant. There's very few, and Giannis is one of the people who could guard Kevin Durant. So if we're talking about the big dogs in the East, we got the Nets and the Heat and the Celtics. So I think that on the defensive end, they, they match up very nicely with all those teams. So I think that obviously always gives them a good chance. In that regard. However, it's all going to come down to their offense. I think I agree with Vish. I think they're doing a lot better job utilizing Giannis because he is a hard player to, to just make an offensive game plan for and get and get involved in the offensive end besides transition. Um, in terms of one thing I'll say is I think that could give him a little bit of an edge is and I think Chris Middleton did a good job with this in the game against the Warriors. I see him take a ton of really long tubes that are very hard shots and he, he makes a lot of them. But at that point, I just think it's a lot smarter and, and just a better just shot to take a three. And I think – Analytically, right? Yeah, analytically, yeah. Like, I think that's just a better percentage shot. And, he, and in this game, he shot six from eight from three. So, I mean, he obviously has shown he's capable of it. And I just see a lot of times he, he takes those two. So, on the offensive end, that's one thing. And then it's obviously going to be interesting how they're new pieces on offense. But especially on defense, they have the pieces, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say no. I think it's going to be Boston and the Nets. I think the only thing Boston lacks is depth, and I think Kemba Walker coming back will do him a lot of good. I'm not the biggest Kemba Walker fan, but they need a third scorer next to Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, and he'll help. Hopefully Mark Jackson is not commentating those games, so we don't need to hear him say, if I'm the Boston Celtics, I'm going to bring them down. I'm going to come down the floor and run high pick and roll with Kemba Walker because that's not their best offense late in games. Get the ball to Tatum. Get the ball to Brown. But for me, I just don't think they have enough offensive firepower in Milwaukee. No one's right on. This defense is going to be top three in the NBA. Giannis is all NBA defense. Drew Holiday is an all NBA level defender. Torrey Craig is near that level. Chris Middleton is an awesome two-way player. Their defense is going to be loaded. And the guys off the bench like Connaughton and DiVincenzo all defend pretty well too. They have a good defensive culture. I just don't think they can – I still have questions about their half-court offense. Chris Middleton is good in isolation, but they still don't have a guy where when the going is tight in the playoffs – and, you know, it gets overrated because most people aren't fans of ISO basketball anymore. But you still need a guy who you can throw the ball to with – eight seconds left on the shot clock in a tight ball game, and he can go get you a shot. And I still don't know who that guy is for the Milwaukee Bucks. It should be Chris Middleton. He has the game to do it, but we haven't really seen him do that consistently. And until we see that, I'm always going to have questions because the Nets have two guys that can do that, and Boston technically has two. And for the most part, Tatum and Brown have been a little underwhelming in those situations. But Marcus Smart comes out of nowhere and just hits big shots like crazy so who knows so my thing is um my biggest gripe with the team was they didn't have a guy who could actually get a shot for himself as well as others Giannis can get his own shot but he's limited with the fact that he's not the best three-point shooter or even mid-range shooter for that point Middleton is a great shooter and can create a shot for himself um not really the best like passer and you can't really get shots for other people I think Drew being the third piece is someone who can do those things enough to where I think they they can match up well with the heat now um having that extra shooting and just not having blood so like they could be a net negative having him like not be able to shoot and being a guard is like actually demoralizing for an offense because like you're just begging the guy to shoot right um I think having Drew helps so much and just that upgrade alone and hopefully Budenholzer um you know, I've I've said it earlier. You can't play Giannis 
32 minutes in a game five. You you really just can't. I don't I don't care about the scenario, even if he's hurt. Like you gotta have your best guys playing at least 38 minutes. Uh that's how I see it. That's that's what Jimmy Butler does, that's what LeBron does, that's what all the stars do. But Giannis playing 32 minutes in a game five is like that's an issue. I mean, simply put, that's a big issue.